Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brownie and I'm one half of the Indecisive Readers. Today I am here to do my February wrap up. I think it's a bit late, it will be like mid-March by the time it goes up, but never mind, we're never on time with things. In February I read a total of five complete books and three like half books, so that's books I finished or started outside of February. One I won't include in this wrap up but two of them I will because I finished them in March and my March TBR is insane and if I'm going to try and talk about them in a March wrap up that may take forever so I'm going to squeeze them in here because I just don't have loads of books. Rating wise it was quite a good month, I seemed to only read books I liked or felt indifferent towards so that's quite good, I didn't have anything lower than 3 stars so yay! <laughs> the first book is the book I won't talk about because I actually included it in my January wrap up and that is Scott Pilgrim Volume 4 by Brian Lee O'Malley. This is the fourth volume in the Scott Pilgrim series and I thought it was okay. I think I rated it three or three and a half stars. It was probably like my favourite ones are the ones I've read so far but I just don't love the series but I also don't hate it. It's just there. The next book I read in February was The Pale Dreamer by Samantha Shannon. I got this on loan from my library but this is the light like, novella that goes with the Bone Season series. It's kind of a prequel so just after Paige has joined the gang and it's just like 90 pages long. If you don't know what the Bone Season is about, it's about like a group of underground criminals who are clairvoyant in a world where clairvoyants aren't allowed to exist. So they live underground so they can't go detected but as the series begins the anti-clairvoyance like ability to detect clairvoyance is getting better Paige gets captured by some otherworldly things and the series spirals out from there. The fourth book's coming out next year, not this year, but that's exciting. Anyway, I read the first two books in the series like mid-2019 and I read the third book in about November and I enjoyed the third book a lot more than the first two and likewise I enjoyed the prequel a lot more than the first two. I gave it five stars because I enjoyed getting that like little glimpse into the gang where they weren't stressed out more than usual, where they weren't stressed out about things going wrong and getting detected for things they can't help. It was nice to see the gang kind of being friendly to each other, seeing some of those interactions, but also seeing their gifts at an earlier stage in their development. So when we join Paige, she doesn't know everything about her gift, but she does know a lot more than she does in this. So it's interesting to see how backwards, that's the wrong, how underdeveloped her gift is and knowing where it's gonna go. But likewise with everyone else, everyone else is growing as the series goes. It's also just nice to see their friendship and see them all being like nice to each other rather than fighting or being frightened and not believing each other. It was also an interesting look into the world. We don't necessarily get more into the world of Scion, so the people that kind of keep them under wraps, but we get more of a glimpse into the kind of magic is the wrong word but the like world of clairvoyance so the poltergeists and the ghosts and the other gangs so it was interesting to get a glimpse into them but get a glimpse into them when Paige doesn't know so Paige is the narrator so the way we look into the world is through her and so when we read the later book she obviously knows about a lot of that stuff already and doesn't have the time to ask the questions but when she's just entered the gang herself she doesn't know a lot of stuff so we get to learn it through her eyes and we get to learn about the rules and the ghosts and all this other stuff that we maybe wouldn't be able to ask about before so I thought that was like quite a good way. I don't know whether it would be better to read this before the first one but it probably wouldn't do you any harm. It's only 90 pages long or possibly not even that. I also really enjoyed the character of Anne Naylor, character may be the wrong word but plot device sounds worse, but Anne Naylor as a concept I really enjoyed, I thought she was a really interesting historical figure and 
I when I was reading it I wished it was longer so we could hear more about her and then when I was like typing up her name to make sure I'd spelt it right and it was Anne Naylor rather than Anne Taylor I found out that she's actually meant to be a real ghost so like actually haunts stations in London and all these terrible things that Samantha Shannon talks about in the book they did genuinely supposedly happen to this girl so I would like to learn more about her and I'm just glad to be able to get that like opportunity to know that she existed. The next book I read in February was Sadie by Courtney Summers. This was an audiobook from my library. I got it as an audiobook because I'd heard it was meant to be really really good as an audiobook. I didn't really know a lot about it other than you should listen to it as an audiobook but it's basically about this girl called Sadie who disappears after she goes looking for the killer of her younger sister Mattie and her aunt I think is it aunt or someone related to her calls this radio host called West McKay who she would like to go and investigate where Sadie's gone and hopefully try and find her because the police haven't done a very good job with it so like I said I didn't really know a lot about this going in it took me a while to kind of get into the narrative because the first couple of chapters it just felt I don't know how to describe it but so descriptive like if there was a road it had to be a red dusty dry road if there was a tree it had to be green shriveled um shaken tree every description had to come with three words and it was a bit over the top I didn't love it at first but I don't know if that went away or whether I just learned to ignore it once I got like more into the story but that was a bit frustrating at the start but yeah I got over that quickly and really enjoyed the story. I thought it was a really interesting story and it was a really good story. Also it was really heartbreaking like how realistic it was but also how not every question was left answered at the end but that sort of left it more realistic these sorts of things aren't always answered they don't always get a happy ending but to see that in a story where we have kind of come to expect happy endings was really interesting but yeah more sad I think as an audiobook I think it's really good everyone who said it should be listened to as an audiobook was correct it had a full cast of characters but West and Sadie were the main narrators because they are the main narrators in the book. Sadie has kind of like her own portion where she does a lot of stuff on her own, goes and sorts stuff out, goes and seeks problems out herself and West goes along behind her, figures out the pieces, puts a puzzle together and interviews the same people or some of the different people. It's frustrating how far behind he is because you're like trying to shout at him and tell him where he should go or whether he's following the wrong trail or just to hurry up because Sadie might be in trouble and so that was well done but his interviews were really interesting because it's not just like he's gone to a closed off recording studio and is talking to these people he goes to visit them when they're at their homes or where they're in a cafe or a restaurant or something and you get immersed in the whole experience there's people talking in the background there's the clutter of like uh cups undoubtedly stuff like that happened in the in the recording where a phone called and you had to go and answer it so yeah i think as an audiobook it was really interesting i don't know what i would have thought if it was like reading it normally but whether i would have stuck with it for so long but i enjoyed it as it was really out of <laughs> and I rated it four stars. The next book I read I didn't read in physical format but I'm picking up the book just so I've actually got a book to hold and that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is the paperback version and I'm not holding the hardback up anymore if I can avoid it because just this one's so much lighter it's still really thick but it's not hardback on top of 900 pages of book. If you don't know The Priory of the Orange Tree tells the tale of the Queendom of Innes, where the Queen's like ancestor defeated the dragon a thousand years ago and has told everyone that as long as one of his descendants lives on the throne they will be safe from the dragon 
However, Iad, an assassin slash mage, has come from the south to protect the queen and has a feeling that, like, not everything is as it seems. It follows a lot of perspectives from all across the world. So there's a dragon rider in the east, there's Iad and Sabran in the west, there's the Priory in the south, and it's just amazing. There are dragons, there's queens that rule over and above men, there's alchemists, there's magic, and it's great. So I listened to this one in audio form. I was listening from about maybe November last year. I've been listening to it on and off for ages, but I finally finished it this month. I probably read like more or less half last month and just yeah finished it off this month and I loved it just as much as I did the first time and possibly even more which isn't possible because I did rate it five stars last time but I took the time to immerse myself in it when I read it the first time I was just kind of reading it not necessarily to get through it but reading it so I could finish it that month and so I was rushing through it to try and finish it on time Whereas with this, I kind of took the time to stop and listen and think about it. I was basically listening to make a summary of each of the chapters so I could have like a document with all the events happening. So when I do my read along, I could kind of actually know what was happening. So if I was behind or someone else was behind and we were having a discussion, I knew where everything was going and also then like if there was a big event happening at the end of one chapter you wouldn't have to leave it until the next week to read it. So I took more time to read it and enjoy it and I did so so much. I loved it. I liked hearing how expectations of women and their gender and also being royal was discussed in this. I loved how intricate the storytelling was in this. Not only the story itself but all the stories that were weaved into it like the myths and legends that this also had. Stories are such an important part of this they kind of really add to the hindsight so knowing obviously what happens having read it before made this read much more interesting but yeah I just loved it. I'm also surprised I didn't realise quite how gay it was before because I knew it was gay but I didn't know who was gay before and so I was reading it being like well that's one girl interacting with another girl maybe it's her and then I'd read another one I was like oh it could be her and then I'd read another one well, maybe it's them with that one instead of that one and when I was reading it I was like honestly how did I miss this it was so gay from the start next time I reread it this year I'm gonna go through and annotate it and highlight all the quotes I really wanted to when I was reading it via audiobook because it's just it's so good. Read it if you haven't already. The next book I read in February I also got from the library but I got in physical format and that is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This I rated four stars. I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would mainly because when I went into it I was just reading it because I thought I had to rather than because I wanted to but I really enjoyed it. I can't explain this I'm just gonna read it in front and the back because otherwise we'll be here forever. Every millennium the missing pieces of the scroll of a thousand prayers are hunted for they hold the power to call the great Kami dragon and ask for any one wish. As the temple burns to the ground Yumiko escapes with its greatest treasure, the first piece of the scroll, and when fate thrusts her into the path of a mysterious samurai she knows he seeks what she has. Cage is under orders to kill those who stand in his way but will he be able to complete his mission Will this be the dawn that sees the dragon wake? So it's about one character who is protecting this dragon scroll and one character who is trying to get the dragon scroll for someone he works for. Having read the blurb, I'm just like, why didn't they just leave it to burn? Because if the dragon scroll is this dangerous, just don't let anyone get it, destroy it all surely. As you can probably tell from the back, there is a guy and a girl. In YA fiction and pretty much any other fiction, a romance will blossom. And fortunately, a romance didn't blossom. A romance is kind of on the horizons, but there was no kissing involved. And so I liked it much more than I thought I would. I think if they had kissed, I would have rated it a lot lower than four stars because it would have frustrated me. But the fact that they didn't was quite good. 
maybe I was feeling generous but yeah I quite liked it. I liked being introduced to a new culture I didn't know a lot about with different creatures and mythology and folklore. There's a glossary at the back that kind of tells you what the words mean so that was quite helpful so like obviously the first time it's mentioned they kind of explain it but it keeps coming up and so it was useful to have something to refer back to when I didn't understand it. The characters felt more like on the young end of YA so Yumiko admittedly is from this monastery that has kind of kept her hidden from the world for ages so she's quite naive doesn't know anything and keeps touching this guy and she's like oh what are these flurries in my belly and so she didn't know a lot but she acted quite young which was sometimes endearing was sometimes like more annoying she is also half fox i think it's kitsune or something that's what it's called and uh, she's got some magic but it's not as developed as it should so i think in the next one it's going to develop more i am planning on reading the next one in march the other character i think was called tatsumi he was your classic brooding evil no attachment ya protagonist see this is what i mean i think if there was a romance i would have hated it a lot more because i feel like i don't like them that much and he was evil and something well is meant to be evil but obviously she's bringing out this soft side in him and something happens to him at the end so i'm interested to see how that will mean the next one progresses there were other characters in this that were really interesting like other samurais other princely creatures and yeah i'm just it was an interesting look into japanese folklore and i'm looking forward to reading some more of it the next book i finished in february was postscript by cecilia ahern this is the sequel to ps i love you which i haven't read but i did get the sequel on netgalley and tried to start it in my like romance reads on but didn't get very far through it so didn't include it in that don't include it as one of my half reads postscript is the sequel to ps i love you which was a book about this woman whose husband had died and a year later or some amount of time later he delivered her a note that ended with ps i love you and sent her on a series of adventures so even things as small as buying a new lamp or going out to karaoke he sent her on these small adventures to one to move on from him but to to just get her life back and to enjoy having him for a bit longer the sequel is set seven years later where she's kind of moved on she's with a new guy and the feeling she had at this time were brought back up when she agrees to do a talk with her sister for a podcast where she talks about grief and the letters and she gets involved in a club called the ps i love you club who want her input when they are writing these letters to their loved ones themselves but i rated this four stars i enjoyed it i cried at it i don't usually cry at books so something was obviously tugging at my heartstrings i think it was a really interesting look at grief and how we each deal with it like differently i think ps i love you as a story we have all really romanticized and kind of like the idea of this treasure trail being left by the person we love when they leave us like unexpectedly or prematurely or even after a long life together i think we've all romanticized the idea that people go too early and we want to remember them for as long as possible and so i thought it was really interesting to talk about and read about it was an interesting look at how we as a culture have really romanticized it and seeing how holly kind of reacts to that and reacts to everyone else was probably maybe what the author is reacting to herself in terms of grief i think it was just really interesting to show that we don't all grieve in the same way and there's no one way to grieve you might feel sad for a week or you might not feel sad until a year later you might still feel sad after 13 years and you might be able to move on without feeling guilty or you might still feel guilty for 20 years and i think it's just 
really interested to see how grief kind of affects us and affects different people and how there's no one right or wrong way to do it. This book is also so little about romance, although it kind of centres on a romance, obviously the whole sequence of events was started by a romance in the first place. It's very little now about the romance, it's kind of about how that romance affects everything else. But also more importantly it's about friendships and family and how those people are there to support you all the time. Even if a romance doesn't go wrong, your family and friends are more or less the people that will always stay with you and it was nice to kind of be given that reminder especially in a romance book because romances obviously are all about the romance but you don't always get the other relationships people have. The friends Holly made and the friends Holly already has were like my favourite part and they were definitely what made me cry. The next book I read I finished a couple of days into March and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Daisy Jones and the Six tells the rise and fall of a band called The Six and Daisy Jones and how they merge into one and how that's bad and how it's also good. It's about their lives separately but how they entwine with the band, how all the band interact with each other, how the band and Daisy both like hate and love each other and that's more or less it. It's kind of done in an interview format so we hear the opinions from each of them. I don't know what else to say. I got this on audiobook again from my library because again I'd heard it was kind of really good as an audiobook and Yes, it was good in, as an audiobook and maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it quite so much if it wasn't an audiobook, but I also feel like they missed out on some things. So I rated it three stars at the beginning as I was listening to it. I thought maybe this will be like four or five stars, I'm really enjoying it, but then it just kind of didn't necessarily get better or necessarily stay at that same level of good. It was just all right. At the start and maybe all the way through I enjoyed Karen a lot more than Daisy. I thought that she had really interesting like discussions about what it means to be a woman and expectations of being a woman not just in a band but just generally how you have this expectation to be a mother and to give up everything you want to do just for the man or for your family. I thought that was really interesting whereas Daisy just kind of was a bit whiny and annoying. Likewise with Billy. I mean, to be honest, I read it because I know Sam Claflin's going to be Billy and I like Sam Claflin. But yeah, I didn't necessarily feel attached to it. I feel like having a whole cast as an audiobook was really good because this is done in an interview format, so I think that's the way it needed to be done. But I think it missed out by not having any of the music. I understand that they couldn't get a whole band to like record the music for it but I mean it would have been good for a small band to like get that kind of support or coverage even if it was just the music and you didn't get the singer. There was one song like that at the very end but there were no singers and because it was the only one I just kind of expected someone to sing on it and I was a bit disappointed that there was none of that in there. I also lost track of who was talking a lot of the time because every time like a person who hadn't been talking for a while came on they'd say Graham, Billy, Karen but if they were just having a conversation I kept losing who it was and other than Karen, Billy, Daisy I probably didn't follow who everyone else was especially the band members because there were lots of them and then there were occasionally like people in Daisy's lives that would crop up like very rarely and I'd be like you were someone but I can't remember who. So I just didn't really get as attached to the story or the characters. I also feel like the characters in this were much less diverse than they were in The Seven Husbands of Edgar and Hugo. I didn't like that one either. I rated that one lower than this one but that's 
because I was reading it on a Kindle and I was just like, not interested. That's me changing the page. Not interested. And I feel like that's maybe what I would have been like with this. These were both stories I was reading because everyone else was excited to read and yeah, it was fine, but it wasn't interesting. Yeah, it was a lot less diverse than um, The Seven Husbands. There were no LGBT characters apart from one, I say no, but like he was like very much a background mention. He was a big character, but it was just like, yeah, so me and Albert, not good Albert, me and Simon went to our condo. I broke up with Simon and eventually got with Jake, but it's not like big enough to be worth noting. And there were also like persons of colour in The Seven Husbands and these all were very white. And I know that not every book can be quite so diverse, but that was a good thing about The Seven Husbands and it just wasn't present in this one. The final book I was reading in February that I'm going to include here is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. I finished this about four days into March but I don't really know why because I think I only had about 10 pages left. I just kept running out of time to pick it up. I rated this one five stars. It was really interesting. This is like the start of the books I kind of want to read about women from history who weren't given a voice or whose voice history took away or whose voice history changed. So this book is a look at the women killed by Jack the Ripper, so his five victims. And if we pull off the dust jacket, if it allows me to, it's got their names written on the like jacket. And it was really, really interesting. I loved it so much. So often when we hear the Jack the Ripper story, we just get the tale of him and people trying to work out who he was, looking at evidence to try and find out who he was, looking at where he went. But this has very little mention of him. Even the murder isn't really spoken about. It's just kind of talking about the events leading up to it and the inquest of the people afterwards to like determine it's them or to talk about them. And so I really appreciated the fact that we just were like, Jack the Ripper? Who's he? I feel like I learned so much from this book. I have never really followed the Jack the Ripper story before. I don't really know what it is. I mean, obviously I know what it is, but I don't really know a lot about it other than this guy. Maybe he's a guy, maybe he's not. Maybe this was like a psychopathic woman and we're taking away the voice from a woman. But this person killed these five women i mean i probably didn't even know it's five women before this and they were prostitutes and that's about as far as i knew but having read this i found out that very few of them were definitely prostitutes at least two or three weren't prostitutes at all and all bar one were in their 40s and i imagine them all to be quite young and you imagine them all to be really poor, but actually, again, two or three of these came from like quite a good wealthy family and they had to walk out because of how crap Victorian life was for women. If they suspected their husband of cheating on them, they either had to live with it or walk out and never marry again. A man could remarry, but the wife couldn't remarry because she's a woman and it was so frustrating to read about to read about all these women that were going through these like hard times and just knowing what was about to happen to them and every time undoubtedly they all fell to drink because how else are you going to cope with living on the streets I just oh, my heart broke and it's really really sad but also so so interesting and I'd really recommend everyone read it I was expecting to read through it slowly because I'm just not a non-fiction kind of person but I think after reading this I realise I'm a non-fiction person when I choose to be. It was quite easy to read obviously not easy in the content matter because it's as I've said really heartbreaking but it didn't feel like a really boring non-fiction book which I just expect them to be and yeah so I just can't wait to read more books not necessarily on this subject but on the subject of giving women a voice.
So that is my very measly pile of physical books I read. And let's be honest, I didn't even read this physically. So that's my very measly pile of books I read. I, I'm i pleased with the ones I read because obviously I really enjoyed them, but I just didn't read many physical books, which is fine. I'm hoping to read more this month. And in fact, I'm already on like five books or something. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Let me know in the comments if you've read or are hoping to read any of these books. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.